Welcome to episode 94 of Let's Talk Geek. In the show, SpaceX has launched, Neotel wins round one against Telcom, Telcom wins round two against ZTM Zansi, and Motorola wins a whole bout against Microsoft. Also, a South African app developer has released a very interesting looking app. To find out about it, watch the show. Thank you for watching. In the show today with me, I've got Johan Els. Good evening. Thank you for joining us, Johan. Always a pleasure. We've got Tim Hawk, and we've got Gerrit Vermeulen. Good evening. I'm Jan Vermeulen. And straight into the random. Uh, so I was at Replied on Twitter, and I feel like this is a coming of age for me on Twitter by somebody who saw an article I did for my broadband, which was entitled LTE in Mortal Danger in South Africa. And that was a quote from the illustrious Arthur Goldstuck who said that ICASA had basically killed WiMAX by mm -hmm. not issuing Spectrum fast enough. And because of how long we are waiting for Spectrum to be assigned in South Africa, we're, we're waiting on, on a policy direction from the Department of Communications. LTE is like they seem like hell-bent on killing LTE in South Africa as well. And so this person tweeted and said, um, you know, LTE in mortal in danger in South Africa. It, I mean, the, the, that headline could, you know, be misconstrued. Uh, no, that yeah, exactly. And so I think it's like um, we are in mortal danger in South Africa because of LTE. Um, and uh, all right, so I I, I didn't want to touch this topic with a barge pole yeah, because it's really because contentious. It just but Tim drives <laughs> me nuts. This keeps on coming back. I still remember watching a cop launch episode. They were talking about of the burnt trees. The Ibers thing. Ibers oh, the Ibers tower. And, and, you know, these poor people that are suffering from it. In the meantime, I've been reading the Sasha articles about this. apparently the Ibers was off for months in the area. So there was no way that this was causing it. Yes. Secondly, they're talking about, you know, her poor, poor, poor child that they put in this, like, mini Faraday cage by wallpapering with all this stuff. And look, he's still sick. I'm going, then it's not the wireless. <laughs> <laughs> Your poor child is sick from something else and you're not helping them and you're blaming the wireless. Go find the real reason. <laughs> and look, it could even be psychosomatic. You know, the, the power of suggestion is so powerful with humans. If I tell you you're sick and I you know, convince you, you will be sick. Um, secondly, all the studies, the, the, look, there's still lots of studies are outstanding, all the rest of it. All the ones that have been finalized so far, not one of them has proven a, a correlation in causing um, cancer from Wireless signals. Wireless signals. Yeah. And to the best of our knowledge, the radiation coming from, from wireless transmitters is non-ionizing radiation. Yes. So it's not considered carcinogenic. You know, well, but... They, they, they can't work out how it would cause this. You, you can't... You're getting stuck. <laughs> but I want to say, I have stopped putting my cell phone in, under my knee, <laughs> under my leg while driving. <laughs> it does get kind of warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's more heat. But it's, it's, there's nothing there that, that could cause yes. it. That, that you know, uh, there is no proven correlation, and all the tests where they think their mind has all so far been disproven o over time. They still need to do more. Uh, secondly, my next one is, and they go, no, but Wi Fi is worse. Wi Fi has less power than the cell. Your uh, power cables in your walls are radiating more power out than the cell phones and the, your wireless devices combined. Mm. I remember a big stink about that in the United States with power lines running over schools and yes. kids suddenly getting a lot of cancer in the schools as well. They've disproven those as well. Disproven those? Yes. Interesting. So, because I remember a big stink about that as well. All right, so on to events. <laughs> now that we've properly, uh, properly angered <laughs> the tinfoil hat wearing, the tinfoil hat wearing audience. Tinfoil hats would work. Anyway, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so first up, uh, from the 2nd of June, or on the 2nd of June, we've got Random Hacks of Kindness. Tell us about that, um, I'll, I'll give a big, uh, the guys from House for Hack, where I was there on Saturday doing the Arduino basic course. Uh, if you have a chance to do it, go do it. It is so worthwhile. It is so amazingly simple to use this thing. It's, it's quite upsetting, oddly. If, if you've used um, any other microprocessors and you've done some assembler programming, it's not like that at all. It's really easy okay. to write a basic C program and it works. Uh, they, they do courses quite often, they do some more. That's house for hack today. They do quite a bit of things. But anyway, uh, they, them in conjunction with, I think, with uh, the Mareka Institute and some of the guys from uh, Pretoria G-Tug, uh, 
uh, and the School of Computing at UNISA. Wait, wait, Pretoria GTUG? It says Pretoria GTUG. Okay, cool. That's uh, good to know. Yeah. Uh, basically, <laughs> we'll cover that next week. <laughs> getting involved with Random Hacks of Kindness, uh, rhok.org. Um, Which is a, a, a nice... Uh, it's a worldwide uh, event. Well, and it's based on random acts of kindness. It's actually quite cute. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, random acts of kindness is a fairly well-known uh, movement. So random hacks of kindness, I thought, was quite a cute play. So what are they going to do? Uh, basically, uh, on the 2nd of June, they're going to be getting together. And they're going to be bringing... Uh, basically, trying to get the community that has problems together with guys who can solve problems. So the, uh, the programmers, okay. the, the graphics guys, all this... Um, they're going to be focusing on, uh, I'm just going to find where they're going to be. For this year, the challenges are planned around education, science and technology, safe water, citizen reporting, uh, and there's going to be a couple of others. But basically, you're going to be getting a whole bunch of geeks together with a whole bunch of people who actually have problems and, and real world problems, and then trying to come up with solutions for this. Um, I would imagine it's a great place to meet other geeks and to work on these projects with them. And even as a learning experience, I would imagine it would be awesome. I would like to be there, unfortunately, I have to be somewhere else. Um, and then also with the community, so you also you're giving back to the community, which is quite nice. And I imagine if you do have a good project and stuff like that, you know, it would get a lot of visibility from this. Mm -hmm. Other event happening this week, actually, uh, I'd like to report back from Johan, is uh, Satcom uh, Africa World, I think, or no, not Satcom. It's um, Satcom. Satcom Africa. Africa. Okay, interesting, because the other the its partner events are Telecoms and the Africa. World Africa World and. Um, or Africa, yeah, Telecoms Africa World and TV show Africa. Yes. Um, so you went to SATCOM. How was yeah, that? I had a quick walk around today. Um, it's good to see international investment in more satellites to cover the Africa region. So there's quite a lot of satellites being planned to be deployed for this area, C-band and KU-band. Mm. Um, there's confirmation from SES I saw. There's um, the uh, Indian guys are going to launch some of satellites. So we should get a lot more satellite coverage in this so area. What does C-band, KU-band mean? <coughs> Um, C band, your standard DSTV is KU band. So it's just, oh, the they're just frequencies. They're frequency bands. Uh, with C band being a lower frequency than KU band, so you need a bigger dish to receive that. Um, but it's obviously got longer reaches. So typically, uh, world case right now, your DSTV at home, you're getting on KU band in South Africa, okay. where the rest of Africa is getting DSTV off C band. Okay. So they need bigger dishes in the rest of them. It's a bigger dish, it's slightly different. So LMB that goes in the middle. And the other big difference is uh, the C band uh, dish has actually got it's it's not solid, it's meshed. It's meshed. It's meshed. Cool. So yes. I want one of those. So those big dishes. They have cooler you see dishes than we do. <laughs> <laughs> but they could mesh our dishes. So there's some of the dishes you see in some neighbours uh, with it's already that at some of the overseas channels that they're pulling out on okay. that C band. I just wanted to mention that I did receive a press release today from Avanti Communications and they confirmed that they'll be launching a KA band satellite to serve Middle East and Africa um, in Q3. So okay. it's, yeah, so that's coming as well. Yeah, a KA band is then something you can apparently receive on a standard antenna. I have no idea. So I'm actually gonna hopefully soon be able to catch up Play on with that. that. Mm. And the next uh, event should have come after my rage. <laughs> yes, we've got Rage coming up in October, and we're going to get psyched about that <laughs> already. For the next couple of months. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So this will be mentioned, and, and I think the mention no. of for Rage will be shorter and shorter in every show no, until just, the month just it actually happens. I wanted to mention it now as we got to press releases, and we were invited to attend. And then obviously, guys can just calendar from uh, Stardust and Serizeta that the ticket sales for the uh, gamers is on the starts on the 4th of August. And so ends it on will the 4th be of end August. Yeah, ending on the 4th as well. It was two hours? It's two hours or something that's yeah. sold out. And they're making the land bigger and bigger every year and it just keeps selling out quicker. Selling out quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Not in days, in hours. So mm. if you're planning to go, die rise the 4th of August. Make the sure you... 4th of stops. August. 4th of August. Not 4th of October. And okay. tickets will only be available com through CompuTicket. Oh. And last year's interview, if you remember right, they were talking about limiting. One of your questions in the interview you had, they were talking about limiting. So limiting what? Amount of tickets you're allowed to buy. Oh, yeah, they were trying to stop for scalpers. They were going to put yes. some things. Oh, were they, are there people scalping land yeah. tickets? Yes. I've heard everything now. Yeah. Look, <laughs> anything that sells us in two hours, there's that I much understand. demand. There will be scalpers. It's just, I mean, like I wouldn't expect people to be that scaly. I guess people are that. And scaly. there are so some people who would rather deal with scalpers than compu ticket. <laughs> I'm one of those. <laughs> So in any case, so yeah, that's just one of the mentions. I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in once a month. Just everybody remembers where you are the first weekend yeah. in October. And uh, we'll remind them, especially in July again, 
Yes. To you know, just remember that fourth of August deadline because yeah. Yeah, that's. I don't think be I've still got the guts to go for and, and buy the ticket to play for a weekend. I just no, look, I'm watching this yes. guys. This guys were just way too hectic for me. That's that's on my Myrtle list. Absolutely, I'm I mean, too old for that stuff. I, I, no, I don't know, I'm maybe, why don't we just I, go I, as a I, group I'm from LTG? I, I'm too busy. Yeah, we're, we're busy the LTG people. guys. Yeah, no, we're busy interviewing people and stuff. We just, it doesn't matter, we can still set up. How's that? Viewers, would you like to see a little LTG? Would you LTG? like to frag we us? get destroyed. Would you <laughs> like to get us? Free frags. Yes. We, we go, we set ourselves up, we play a couple of, what do we play, Age of Empire? <laughs> Online. You're going to be playing Age of Empires. <laughs> Quake. At least, at least play Quake. Okay, let's play some Quake. Can we make some friends? And then KQP we'll... patch. We don't need the press passes to get into the exhibition area or into the planning. We can take... It's not a bad idea. Let's think about it. Let's yeah, think about yeah. it. All right, so... If, if, we can, if we can get four tickets. I don't know. 100, 200 rand? No, I think there's 300 rand, but that's fine. Yeah, right. We also have some tech news happening uh, in South Africa and around the world proving that, that the only thing worth reporting is not... A portrait of our president's penis. So, I just want to say. It. Anyway, <laughs> yes. I, I just had to drop that in there. But uh, first up, the SpaceX launch. Now that's fairly exciting. Very cool. So, um, let's Elon what? Musk. Yes. Um, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the SpaceX launch. This is a commercial spacecraft. So the idea is that this is a fully private space enterprise. And uh, the the uh, the Falcon 9 delivered the Dragon to orbit. And I think. The dragons cool beat names. dragons beat spears every day. So, um, so just if, if, do you know what the dragon is actually is? No. What's so the? It's dragon? a carrier. It's got some supplies in that. They hopefully, they are they. I quickly read uh, SpaceX site is actually amazing. You're going to get yourself lost here for a while. Um, and they were talking about that the dragon capsule has now got some supplies in that they're actually going to help refuel the space station. So not gasoline but more like food supplies and that sort of stuff. And stuff for experiments as well. Yes, there's some additional stuff they want to give for more experiments. Mm. And then, um, so the, the capsule so is now going through a bunch of tests. Proven that they can deliver payloads. That's what they've done, exactly. So private South African payload is being delivered to the space station. Mm. South African. Uh, Elon Musk is a, is a South African born. Yes. Uh, his one parent South African, his other parent is uh, ah, North American. Just leave it South African. Like Tolkien is South African. Hmm. He lived here for like, Eight months. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the forests are it counts. Off, off of no, South no. African forests. Mm. They're very cool. I don't know if you walked down that area. I can't remember where it is right now. Nays no, now. Oh, it's nine. Well, it's actually more Queenstown, that, that, more that direction. <laughs> then the other big news for the week was Facebook's initial public <coughs> offering. No, 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 no. Wait, just, just, just. It, it's not quite a tank Mark's just yet. week that he had. Well, he listed, he got married, his shares plummeted. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> While on honeymoon, <laughs> hope his honeymoon is better than he shares. <laughs> he probably because that sort of drop on honeymoon is not going to work. Yeah. So there's a lot of controversy <laughs> around this, and uh, people are talking. Uh, there, there's talk of suing Facebook, Zuckerberg, and the investment banks involved, because there is talk that the um, that there was what they call dis discriminant or discretionary dissemination of information. So certain investors, priority investors. Um, were given information about the IPO and about Facebook's valuation um, that other people did not get in, you know, in the same amount of time. And so, uh, you know, you've got the guys like Goldman Sachs and these guys who are sitting pretty. And you've got the, the private investor uh, or the smaller investor who could have lost a lot of money on this thing. But they, um, uh, if, if you look at some of the articles, uh, and this is from Reuters, by the way, the, the coincidence is just too much to, to just sort of have gloss have over. Yeah. Um, all four the underwriters cut the Facebook outlook at the same time. And so the argument is that that would not have happened without direction from Facebook. From a, from a, uh, and so the, the, the story being told right now, but it's unconfirmed, so this is not a fact yet, but that a Facebook financial executive actually told the underwriters to cut the outlook. Um, that's the latest I know. Uh, the story is developing so quickly that might have changed by now and that it is in fact a confirmed fact. Um, but bottom line is this isn't looking good uh, for Facebook or Zuckerberg and the investment banks involved. So what so could be the worst case scenario? He goes to jail. And Facebook? He said worst case scenario. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, Facebook will continue. It just will be people who have colluded and stuff like that will, f will face legal... You know, so it's, not, it's not as 
bad that a government organization can close Facebook down. No, no, no. No, no, that, that, that won't happen. Okay. But, but the uh, NASDAQ might have to... We can all hope. Yeah, NASDAQ might have to, be, might have to cough up for, uh, you know, for, for the stuff up maybe. Because, uh, like, people couldn't trade, right? <laughs> the NASDAQ, people couldn't actually trade. There was a technical glitch preventing people from... I think more than once. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, th there's, there's so much that went wrong during this IPO. Uh, and, and it being the IPO story of the year, um, one of the... Probably the greatest thing that's come out of this is the financial education. Because all of a sudden people understand, because Facebook is such a, a, high, a high profile thing and a lot of people have interest in Facebook, private people have interest in Facebook, all of a sudden private people are understanding what an initial public offering in the United States means. And that's a great thing, actually, financial, financial literacy speaking. So uh, look, I must say when I was looking at sort of the, it, I didn't think Facebook was, Facebook I think it will keep on going, you know, we, we're not financial people, first thing I'll say we don't know this. But just the way everybody was talking about how much they were initially going in, it sounded, everybody was surprised at how much it was. And, and generally, to me, that's a bad sign. Mm. <laughs> so in a weird way, you, I expected it to drop. Um, but generally, these things then pick up later. But let's see what happens with it. Yeah. Well, I think it's a company that will still be here for many, many years. The, the, the stock before. price did, did strengthen. like So it is fluctuating. It's not just on a... Going down. It, okay. it, it strengthened quite a bit in the middle of the day. I don't know where it's sitting at now. Well, um, trading is only open probably now in the States. So yeah. So we'll have to go through another day to see what happens. Yeah. So it's... it's, it's an, and it, what's, what's interesting to me is how interested average people are in this, even though they've got no money riding on it. Um, uh, anyway, and so locally, I, will, uh, I want to move us more to local news because as interesting as Facebook is, it, it has almost no bearing on us down here. What does have bearing on us is a Chinese company getting an interdict against Telcom, preventing them from upgrading my ADSL line. What? <laughs> yeah, so so this, <laughs> happened, this happened some weeks ago. Yeah. ZTM Zansi uh, got a high court interdict against Telcom, preventing them from rolling well, no, out. No, the effect was preventing them from rolling out. Well, that's what the interdict was. The interdict was yeah. to prevent them from continuing from, from the project. Th there was a uh, tender that went out for components for the project. Yes. They basically put an interdict saying, you may not buy those components or go forward with those components. It, the effect was stopping the roll. Okay, cool. But it's not an action interdict saying, you can't roll out. Yes, yes. It's, it's about, we think there's something flawed in your uh, procurement process and you didn't follow your tender guidelines, uh, which from what I've learned is, is actually... Those things are pretty hardcore, actually. Yes. When you go out and open tender, yeah, um, it's and rigorous. that's what they're doing. It's, it's basically, they say, you should have bought from us. The equipment that you're owning us is the wrong equipment. Basically, we want an interdict. Well, we, we shouldn't have been disqualified from the tender, yeah. is, is part of the argument. However, the High Court has granted Telcom leave to appeal the interdict, which effectively allows Telcom to begin at least with a pilot. And so the, 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 the pilot project uh, rollout, uh, or the rollout will now proceed. That's what Telcom said. They said... Oh, that was that, but that, that, oh, that was a couple of months ago. Yes, they exactly. They identified some suburbs it's going to get... Yes, exactly. Oh, it's called yes. multi-service access nodes. They're going to replace mm. all the aging infrastructure. When's with the Telcom stuff? freeze period? It ends in June, on June 11th. Okay, I so think. at least that won't affect now the fact that they can go ahead. No, no, no. Um, no, no, it wouldn't. Okay. No, it wouldn't. Uh, they just won't talk about it. Uh, so without making a SENS announcement first. So they need to let the, the rule is they need to let the JSC know first and then they're allowed to tell the rest of the well, world. Okay, uh, people in RSC is that that whole thing actually stopped the rollout dead. Yes. Yes. So it, it would have, I mean, the interdict. Yes, yeah. it would have. It stopped the rollout dead and now that they've won leave to appeal. Um, and what's interesting is leave to appeal still means you can lose. <laughs> but uh, I, I think if reading between the lines here, Telcom is fairly confident that they're, they're not, not going to. Okay. And so they, they're confident to proceed with the rollout. And f as a South African internet user, as a broadband aficionado, as somebody who watches the South African broadband space quite, you know, quite closely, this is very encouraging. Having infrastructure in place that can deliver up to 40 megabit per second speeds to us would be a dream come true. What's the app speed? The app speed. Are that they going to give us one meg? Pointless. <laughs> they they will um, also have fiber. They'll have XPON, so so passive optical network stuff. Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah. matter. What is the app speed? That um, I mean, the, what the ADSL now can give us more app. The ADSL than fiber. No, no. no. 
Currently, let's say you've got a four meg or a ten meg line. Just give us okay. a DSL line, right? If I've got a ten Top meg line, yeah, yeah. I've got one meg down. Sure, it's, sure. It's, it's a ten to one ratio. And and perhaps this is an argument now for if you allow other operators to to cut sort of closer to the bone to to have bitstream access, that sort of thing, then maybe they can start offering. I mean, there's nothing you can do about a sync speed, I think, without affecting the without actually being able to affect the D slam. But no, you you oh, look. You have to. It's changed on the yeah. Yeah, so so I mean, hopefully, this kind of competition will allow people to build products that offer higher speeds on DSL on normal copper connections. Um, no, the product exists. The operator is deciding what's the ratio. Are yes. we just saying Tal Telcom's decided that this the is ratio, ratio just doesn't make well, sense. Well, they don't want you to compete against the symmetric options, which is DigiNet. I can't think of any other reason why they wouldn't they do it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's basically so you can't. Yeah. So while while we're talking about this, uh, it's a topic further down, and we're going to mess up the slideshow if we do. So I'm not going to. But we're getting we're going to get to another story involving Neotel that ties in beautifully with this. So I don't want to spend too much time oh, on it yeah. now. Uh, we will get to it. So into tonight's topics, and I think to start with. The MK802, fancy uh, acronyms and numbers, what do they mean? It is a PC on a stick. Uh, it is like the cotton candy, except... What is the cotton candy? A PC on a stick. What, yeah. what yeah. Stick? Running USB, USB stick. Okay, this one specifically is uh, running a 1.5 gigahertz, and I love this one, all winner, A10 CPU. <laughs> what uh, on earth is that? Is that the, that's the CPU that it's running, it's a 1.5 gigahertz. Is it a, a range, what, Mac Cortex. GPU? Yes, it's Cortex. Okay, so it's Cortex A10, not an A9. And are these things running Android? Or 512 megs of RAM, 4 gigs of storage, similar to the cotton candy. What and this running? one is running Android 4.0. Awesome. Cool. Ice cream sandwich, yeah. Yes. And the cotton candy? Uh, the cotton candy, I'm that actually was not it? sure. But it was also Android. It's not you, mm -hmm. not, not like a... Were you display and yes. Input and display device, how does this work? Uh, HDMI. For HDMI port. Uh, this one. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, wait. There was a slight difference. The one has an HDMI port. Oh, but doesn't this one doesn't come with a connector, but it does have the port for it. So the cotton candy actually comes with a connector. Okay. So it's uh, all, in, cable all in one box, yes. Okay. Um, and then the difference, of course, the, the cotton candy has a 1.2 gigahertz Samsung processor uh, and, yeah, the connector, etc. And then some slight differences in size, three and a half inches versus 3.1. Mm -hmm. So not, not really much there. And it's interesting, there. I mean, there was a lot of hype around the cotton candy and mm -hmm. these guys have beaten them to market. They've beaten them to market and they've beaten them on price too. The cotton candy is for $199. This one is going for $74. $74 I mean, I, I and I mean, that's not bad yeah. for what you're getting. You still obviously need to get a display somewhere but to actually this hook it up. against the... Damn it, I've gone blanking. The Raspberry Pi. Raspberry yeah. Pi. And yeah. those, those types of things. Well, yeah. the, the Raspberry Pi is, is, a, is sort of aimed at a different, a completely different demographic. What, what would yeah, you, you, see could, you could use this as a Raspberry oh, Pi. What would, would you see the you? application of this to write? Where would you use this? I don't know. That's not the reason to make it's something. A cheap, it's a cheap PC. <laughs> yeah. So think about it. You could take this down to a school, plug it in. You just need to add the keyboard. Now, because it's in that small device, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's far less breakable. So this is going to go into a US powered USB hub. So yeah. you're going to need a... Powered USB or a TV hub. or something maybe mm. that will give power to the USB port yeah. so it can mm -hmm. boot up. Yeah. And then you said HDMI port, and then in the hub you go with your P your no. note, uh, your keyboard and mouse. So we're sitting at what seven hundred and what did you say seventy five dollars? Seventy four dollars. Seventy four dollars. Under a thousand rand for PC. No, it's under the ninety nine dollars. Yes. Market it's everybody's aiming for. Well, yeah. for cell phones, ah. yes. No, and no, no. You, now also with this, if you're giving this to kids, they can also take this home with them. That's true. Mm. That's true. Oh, that's it's something, it's something okay. that's not quite as attractive to steal as a laptop or a phone well, or so a tablet small, PC even. It's, it's more portable. It, you know, it, it's a lot harder to steal actually. Uh, you know, you can show in your pocket and walk away. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's easy to steal. I mean, because it's small, but it's much... I mean, why would you steal that when you can have a phone? Yeah. Also, so. why would you steal that? It's $74. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, uh, on to some more concerning news, which is the... Um, a Sesco, did I pronounce that correctly? Um, uh, is the Greek goddess of healing, or something like that. 
an, sorry, a, and it's yeah, a CISO, I think. A CISO allowing London police to instantly download all of your phone's data. So some background information from these articles. Um, there, there was recently some articles on the CIA doing exactly this for troops deployed in places like Afghanistan. Where uh, a, uh, a car... Uh, yes? I have a question. No, finish and then okay. I have my question. Uh, where as a car drives up to a roadblock, to a checkpoint or whatever, they rip all the information off that phone, transmit it back to language. When you say all the information, what do you mean? Everything, Everything that your, they can actually get. Your, your phone book, your private data that they can access, um, your... Do you know how much data... It, you can't do that that quickly over Bluetooth. Yeah, otherwise. so they'll probably direct it. So at most when they say this, it's actually more packet sifting. They'll get your cell phone number maybe, and they'll get your carry ID so they know that that phone, and they're actually just doing a little snapshot of the phone. It's pretty much... The the, they, they were talking about specifically your, your address book, so people you communicate with, your call history, and uh, what what was the other no, thing? No, like no, no, messages, no, no. your Hold SMSs on. and stuff. When you pull, okay, that was what, great. What Tim is trying to say is, how many contacts have you got in your phone? Lots, thousands. So how are you going to get a complete list of that Over while you're wires. driving up? Okay, so magic. No, there's, 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 no there's, there's, anyway, I'm, I'm about telling you what the reports are. So they're probably, they could do what they're they talking about, over the cell phone tells. what they're probably talking about is they, they're getting the contact, the last calls, the call history with the SMSs, absolutely. And all they're doing is they're matching that to your address book. Sure. Okay, so not maybe all the information on the cell phone. Yes. But How the, much the, information but, would they need to pull? Yeah, you know, the, the thing yeah. is, if you're doing it over Wi Fi, the, the, the speeds are fast it's enough. It's the capability. The bus pulls up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the this, bus needs to just stand there. This for a won't while. be why. If, if, for it to be Wi Fi, it's going to be a smartphone and the Wi Fi has to be on. Yeah. No. So it would actually be more be over Bluetooth. Then the Bluetooth could, on the it phone could needs just to be on. Over the GPRS. Over the carrier it, signal. Yeah, it, this yeah. doesn't make sense. All right. Doesn't make sense. So, so I know, but this is what the reports say. So then what they do is they scrape the data, whatever they need, they send it back to Langley. They run it through their super duper awesome yep. enhanced CSI machines and they send back a red, uh, yellow or green signal back to the troops on the ground to tell them if they need to further question the person, whether they need to detain the person or whether the person is free to go. So, and this needs to be done in seconds so that, so that yeah. the person can literally pull up, the, the guy can sort of knock on the window and then he gets a green light and he says, thank you, you can Just go. thinking how it works, I'm sure what they're doing at that point is they're matching the phone. They've pulled all the logs off the cell phone tiles of what that phone's been doing. And basically, Langley, what they've done is, here's a phone ID, do I need to stop this phone or not? Has this, has it's already done all the processing yes. back home. That is not what the reports say. So I'm just going to state this clearly. Saying, what you're saying is not what the reports say. They scrape the data off what your phone. I, what I'm saying is this, basically how this would work. This, okay, a CISO, this? this yes. a CISO goddess software is said to do exactly the same stuff for the London police. Okay, but hold on. Look at the picture on the left-hand side that we've got there. That is a... A bag full of USB cables. Look at it. Yes. <laughs> they that is also Thank mentioned. You. Yes. Yeah. It is mentioned in the in the articles it in the report. It doesn't appear to be wireless. Yes, yes. it's not wireless. So they no, need to actually get discussion. access to your yeah. device. Yes. Plug it in. So they get the right codes from all the manufacturers to reboot your phone into maintenance mode, and they can scrap that information easily. Yes. Yeah. Mm. The recovery and mode and on Android phone and is just and a button. Anybody in the business can tell you that physical access to the machine is how you compromise it. Yes. So it yes. needs to be locked up. What's more fun is if they have this, so do the Chinese and they're doing it to the Americans. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, yeah. anyway, so I also just wanted to mention here, does, does anybody, and, and the, the skepticism on this panel I love, because you remember, you remember the situation with WikiLeaks uh, releasing that whole uh, expose on the global surveillance industry to wake people up to what's happening in the surveillance industry. And one of the companies named was a South African company. And they're talking about how this happens in secret and blah, blah, blah. And so I actually can't because, I mean, obviously we've got to do an article on this. And so I, I contacted the South African company for comment and they said, we don't do this in secret. We sell the stuff on open, you know, you know there's open yeah. tenders. <laughs> we, we go to things like SATCOM, but for sur surveillance people. Mm. And we present our product to people. Um, so it's, it's, look, it's all about data mining. Look, but there, exactly data mining, and there, <coughs> but there's sophisticated data mining techniques out there now. Now, what's interesting is leading on from this was a tweet from a friend, which has been removed from the show notes. Probably better that way. But who said that you know he he kind of feels that his tech you know they, there's no escape anymore. 
There's like doesn't is matter. Is that what that's? Is that where a tight end? Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. So, right. so your like wherever you are, your technology will let the man, as it were, big find brother. You. Yeah, um, and know everything about you. There's Skynet. No place, there, exactly. No place. And and exactly, it reminded me of Skynet and the whole situation. I think it was in Terminator Two, where uh, old John Connor uh, drops off the radar completely. Doesn't have a cell phone. Doesn't have a bank account. He doesn't have any electronic fingerprint at all, and that's the only way he stays off the Terminator radar. So we're all screwed. Oh, well, <laughs> there, there's some truth in that. The, I the welcome our robot overlords. Is <laughs> just not there's me. just so much data. There is so much data out there. You know, to actually process it, they've got to actually target you. No, or you did something that makes you a target. You've you said the wrong word your in your profile. email, or you used the wrong search string on Google. Or you said the wrong thing on a list of teacher. You poked the wrong bear with a spear. While speaking to someone on your cell phone. Something, that's all. No, no, I, and, and, well, look, I'm fairly sure they're doing it in this country. I know they're doing it in America. They, they're doing some analysis. Rika apparently words. does allow legal forms of interception on yeah. suspects. Yes. Hmm. So, uh, I, look, no, I know we intercept people in this country, definitely. <laughs> and that's all you're allowed to say on the topic. <laughs> um, moving along to how we That is all I would like to say because I don't want to become one of those, uh, one of those targets. I'm sorry. <laughs> you stick your head out too far, you're going to be, what? You're going to be a target. And then, uh, anyway, so um, uh, my broadband and ellipsis have a... Uh, so the way to solve this is you'd need to go and basically encrypt everything on your phone and on boot up put a password to decrypt it which in England you're required to give them. So you need the dual encryption where we've got two passes. Two-factor auth. Uh, no, no, the first password decrypts it to something harmless. The second password actually decrypts it to what it is. But then again, if you're using a bad example, if you're using Android, they're not going to bother to contact you. They're just going to phone Google for no, the no. port order. But what, uh, yes, what? okay, so the phone Google, right? They, they, they download your phone, your data off your phone, off mm. the SIM card. And all they get, they get this encrypted file. No, but I mean, they can just phone Google and ask you f and that's ask why them for what your have you been That's why he's asking for two-factor or, no, but, or for, for but two passwords. So one, Google still one is knows your address book. Well, Google no, so you don't store your address yeah, book. Sure. You basically have apps that then speak into this encrypted folder. Yes. Yes. Once yeah. it's mounted. So you know, basically, basically, you turn your smartphone into uh, a, 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 a little island <laughs> because you can't talk to any cloud service. No, you can still talk to them. But then the authorities can just go talk to the cloud service and say... To find out what you've been no, doing. You don't store your cool data on, on the cloud service. Yes, exactly. So okay. then you're not using it, are you? <laughs> There's a way. There's a way. <laughs> anyway, so... Don't stick your head back, into the ordinance. Back, so. back to South Africa. Um, so there are things underway to develop policy on broadband in South Africa. I really just want to give this a quick mention. The deadline is looming. So this show, this is really for the people listening live because by the time the recording is released, I think it would have been too late. The deadline for a lot of these things, uh, for the, a lot of these submissions are the 25th of May. That's this Friday. Um, so uh, Ellipsis, which is a regulatory uh, advisory firm and, and, a, and a legal firm, um, uh, have partnered with My Broadband to give voice to consumers' needs. So, um, uh, so we've given them a forum on My Broadband, and other than that, it's Ellipsis' a show, uh, and we just try to sort of you know, make people aware of what's happening. Um, and so there are three different areas, uh, that, or three different areas that are being discussed, and uh, and so if you're interested, it'll be in the show notes, and we'll probably paste them to IRC just now. Um, yeah, make your voice heard. Uh, if you have if you have a suggestion about policy, whether that's local loop unbundling, spectrum assignments, uh, there there is a category I think for pretty much everything. Everything is under discussion for the ICT policy co colloquium coming uh, on the seventh of June. Um, so, yeah, uh, don't don't say we didn't give you an opportunity to have now, your now, say. Now the the long segue into our previous conversation. Yes. So getting right back to <laughs> local loop unbundling. And uh, and uh, the the whole situation in South Africa with symmetric, you, I mean, you want symmetric stuff. And, um, so I don't even need it to be symmetric. I just want it to be closer to symmetric. So when I have a ten meg, give me t yeah five. Give me so, five. Oh, what's it? Five twelve, and you're two five six. So, so I, I'm it's stepping very far out yeah, of my five. out of my domain of of experience here. But um, the ADSL works by segmenting parts of the of the spectrum that the copper uses right yeah and so part of that spectrum so it's got the voice part 
that it's not that, that it's not allowed to touch to the best of my knowledge. Now, ADSL technology might have improved since the last time I read the Wikipedia article. No, but it does touch it because that's why you need the ADSL splitter. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't actually. It, it, it only makes a little clicking noises. Yeah. yeah, it only makes a little clicking noises. It doesn't actually like make it too bad. Um, so uh, there, there are two parts to this. To this, so you've got like a, a large chunk that's usable and a smaller chunk that's usable, and uh, more often than not. They use, we understand it, the small chunk, and people in the IRC can correct me, and you guys can tell me if they correct me, for upstream. And so, depending on how far you are from the exchange, yeah, that will affect your synchronization speed. And so, they have to they have to decide whether they're going to favor download or upload. Yes. Um, well, and so, there are obviously symmetric products available. Effectively, elsewhere if, in the if world. I understand it correctly, they have a certain amount of bandwidth. Yes, but it's a certain amount. And they can allocate it in whatever ratio they want. I don't think it's that simple because the the, the spectrum is split on either side of, of where no, voice no, sits. So voice sits between 20, 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz. They right? actually do this in the higher frequencies as far as I know. They don't do the lower frequencies. Oh, it would make sense because the lower frequencies gives you a higher bandwidth, higher high capacity frequency. and the higher frequencies. So pretty much yes. that, that filter that you got there is a high frequency filter. So pretty much the ADSL actually runs in higher frequencies. Okay, voice is simple. Voice is sitting between 300 hertz and 3, three kilohertz. Yeah. So you've got from three kilohertz upwards. Well, to, to whatever the, the cable supports. Well, remember the cable is designed well, I, I was think designed to carry voice. Was, was it telegraph wire? Four kilohertz, because there are some high uh, voice components in there. And okay, it, so it was four the kilohertz, yeah. you can easily go yeah. up to twenty-two kilohertz. You can you could eat twenty kilohertz, but it still doesn't explain why there would be a split in in in. No, okay. There well, is okay, a let's let's explain. Okay, in in the frequency domain, you've got where the voice is. And they've split the lower ones for where the voice is carried and the higher ones for the data. Yes. Yeah, that's all you're saying. No, I'm talking about the data. The yes. So that, that carrier area at the top is whatever you've got. There, there are two carrier areas. That's what I'm telling you. I, I'll have to read up to get it exactly right because I was, I'm a little unprepared for this topic. But there are two carrier areas. There's nothing under 300. And probably not there then. But they, I know that specifically and that they've got to decide how to use those two carrier areas. But be that as it may, I, w I don't want to send you on to this topic too much because I might, as I say, like I don't actually know enough to be able to speak on this authoritatively. So what I do want to say is that Neotel... Yeah, following from that argument, theoretically, they could turn it around. Yes, absolutely. They can give you four, if, four up and five down. But to, my yes. no to my knowledge, overseas that you get ones with are much... That are symmetric. Yes, you get it. Symmetric. Yourself. Um, and as far as I know, it's, you, you do get one, so you transmit it and you receive but it. But it's completely dependent on how, and, and it's, it's about how complicated you want to make your product line. So it's, it's completely dependent on how far you are from your exchange. Well, that's your, your total speed. Your, your sync speed. That's your sync speed. Right. So the total bandwidth that you have on that line is, is that. I think that now some, some get, segments of get, the carrier. To get that through, they do a lot of modulation and frequency modulation yes. on that signal. Yes. A lot of your carrier is not available if you're very far away from the exchange. Yes. This is going to take, let's anyway. go check our facts and, and let's... No, that's no, what I'm, I'm saying. I'm pretty sure you can get more symmetric now. You can, uh, but, there is, but there is a trade-off. Why is what I'm trying to drive at. There is a reason why. And, we're and not, I like we're not, his reason. And we're not going to be able to cover it. They don't want to protect their, their dedicated services. Their DigiNet services. Yeah. Why would you then get a DigiNet uh, service? I, I think that's part of the answer, but it's not the full answer. So what I do want to say, though, but is that now, yes, your next next topic is is so we've been talking about um, local loop unbundling, which basically will allow other operators to use um, the incumbent telecoms copper infrastructure, yeah. the stuff that runs yes. um, uh, to your house. Right. And um, so what Neotel has done, the the um, the regulator, ICASA, has actually published facilities leasing regulations. And so Neotel have decided to, to jump the gun a little. And they've said, under the facilities leasing regulations, we should be allowed access to telecoms infrastructure to put down our own next to it um, and be able to use the local loop, even if it is with our own equipment, mm -hmm. is the way I understand it, loosely, right? Uh, things in regulation are always far more complicated, but that's it. Uh, Telcom said, no, you're not allowed to do that, effectively. Um, and so Neotel took it to the Complaints and Compliance Commission at ICASA. And so the Complaints and comp compl so Telcom tried to have the whole thing dismissed. Of course. Um, and so they right. said that Neotel's request is invalid, blah, blah, blah. The bottom line here is that the Complaints and Compliance Commission have said Neotel's request is valid. ICASA does need to attend to it um, and needs to do that under the existing framework, the existing legislation and the existing uh, regulations. So um, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes, because this is just really round one 
yeah, yeah. of what looks to be a very long battle. Plus, I mean, we're talking about having a bitstream product ready in November this year, local loop unbundling down the road, maybe. So, I mean, it's it's interesting to see um, Neotel fighting this fight now. Um, it will be very interesting to see them win. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would. It could make this more place. It'll be very ever. interesting to see what they do if they do win. What they will do, what the confirmation we've got is they're looking really at two exchanges, and that's a bit disappointing. They want the commercial exchanges. I think Rosebank is one, and there's another one um, whose name I don't remember right now. So you who want symmetric DSL at your house in Johannesburg are not going to get it, or at the studio in Centurion, we're not going to get it. Neotel really just wants to try and get a slice of Telcom's business pie yeah. in the DSL market. Cool. Having said that, I've quickly switch. looked up the ADSL speeds. Ooh. Yes. There are limits to it, uh, but it ranges. So it's 8, uh, you can dance in your aperture. So it's 8, 1, 12, 1. 1.3, 12, okay, goes all the way down. 1.5 and then 0.5, but it goes, there's a 12, 3.5 up. Yeah, but which but technology? Because we, I don't think we're using ADSL two and two plus inside that. We are using yeah, two plus. plus. Some, some of the ten ones or two plus. Some of our extenders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, all the ones that have ten. No, uh, they, we, yes. So not mine. Plus, we've got two plus technology, but we don't have the back wall. Okay, wait. Is the problem? Wait. Just look at our ranges. So what do they say? If you have a one meg line, what should you be able to upload it? What, a one meg line down. Yes. Yes. They don't have that. That's lots of it. Eight, eight megs down. Because one oh, meg sorry. is so pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say for what 10 megs? The first one for eight megs down, right? Sh you should be able to have an upstream of one. Which is how it works. Yes. No, if you've got, got a 10 meg line, you sync it up at one. You sync no, no, at one. No, no, that's, this is eight megs. So this is any line that currently has up to eight megs, on, this is ADSL one, should be able to have a speed up to of one meg. Yes. Then the, the, we, the 10 ones work yes. on the... Uh, ADSL 2 plus that one there is one there that goes up to 3.3 megabits up oh yes thank you so you can That's choose to, to do that yes please that would be lovely mm. uh, and what that, I would and like to see 24 are the frequency down. characteristics and how close to the exchange you have to be for that to work are those things there they're, they're all because I mean this gives us I mean the, those are parameters but it's still not a complete understanding of how ADSL works that I'd like to get to. Maybe we'll do that in another episode. Yeah. Um, because there are always technical trade-offs to be made. There, there, there's obviously a business reason, but I think there are technical reasons as well for why the, the, these decisions were made initially. Why 4, four meg okay. and, and 512? Why? Um, and it's a valid question. So um, that's it, for, I think, for, for the deep telco South African news. <laughs> Moving swiftly along to Nokia pulling apps <laughs> from its store for its phones. So the Nokia Lumia 610, which is the cheaper Windows one of, phone. Yeah, I think it's the probably the cheapest one at the moment. They've budged on the hardware quite a bit. Um, yeah, it's a what? It's an 800, is it 800? 800 megahertz uh, CPU. It's underclocked. The max for the chipset uh, is 1000. So, but the, the minimum for it is 600. So mm. they've kind of gone up from the minimum. They're somewhere in and the middle. And the real place they skimped is the RAM, right? 256. The 256 man. and the GPU. It's an Adreno 200. But the RAM is the real, is probably the real culprit here. It's 256 megs and instead so of the usual happened? for Windows phone, what are they which pull? is 512. They pulled Skype. Skype is owned by who? There we Microsoft. go. <laughs> so hold on. Hold so on. Skype. Nokia phone running a Microsoft operating system has pulled a Skype product that's owned by Microsoft. Yes. Because, and the reasoning for it is they blame the poor user experience. Now, it's not pulled for all Windows phones. It's pulled specifically for the Lumia 610. So, Lumia 610 owners can't get it. Device Lumia goes. 700, uh, 710, 800, and 900 owners will still be able to get Skype. No problems, because those are really, they, the, the, the specs are so up. similar with those ones. Um, they've skimped on a little bit of the hardware going down, you know, if, if you go down. But yeah, now you're pulling apps for specific devices. Mm. Which is something we see on Android, uh, but they don't get pulled. They don't get pulled, they get released for specific yes. devices or for specific device characteristics. But then again, Android was designed for this in mind. Android is designed for different screen resolutions, different screen densities, um, different hardware. The, the thing uh, with uh, Windows uh, Phone, you're running more or less on the same hardware. Now they're trying to pull it down or Nokia is probably trying to push it down, and Microsoft is going along with it. And I've always wondered how it would scale if you try and push the specs you know, all the way down, because they're trying to compete on that, because competing in the high end is not getting them the big bucks. Mm -hmm. So to give everybody an idea right, of the markets that Nokia does well in, those are, those are developing markets. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that's how they maintain still uh, the high market share that they do is, is on their cheaper devices like the Usher and um, you know the E, I think the E class devices. And e and the C ones. class. Yeah. Um, so they're normal uh, non-smartphones. So they're feature phones, but they've got smartish characteristics. They they're check symbions. email and they're able to run JTME apps, the, the whole nine yards, right? Um, those phones in the developing areas, take a wild guess based on, based on stats. I'm not going to name names right now, but based on stats I've got, take a wild guess in South Africa what the smartphone sales are compared to normal device sales. Right, silence. 75% of device sales in South Africa are below the 1,000 Rand mark. Yeah, it makes sense. So they really need to compete in that space. And Android is encroaching very quickly on that area. We've got sub-1,000 Rand smart um, uh, Android. And Android phones. And not on. bad ones either. And we've got, exactly, the Samsung Do Galaxy Skype? Pocket. Hmm? Do they run Skype? I, I should actually test that. I should actually get my hands on a Pocket and test Skype. Because yeah. the Samsung Galaxy Pocket is out. It's pretty much a full Android experience. And it's, it's released for 999 so a thousand bucks for a smartphone. With TouchWiz. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't touched that phone, so I can't comment on it too much. Just use the pun. <laughs> I'd actually like to play with that because as well, um, I, I've said it a bunch of times, the Huawei IDOS made waves. It did. It did particularly well in Kenya. Um, and it is a decent phone. I've actually played around with it. It's a good decent Android experience on that I phone and it, it's question, cheap. question though, until they provide something like the BB phones do. How do you mean with BIS? Like BIS. 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 Never going to happen. Will those phones, or they remove BIS options from? What we've seen happening is, um, and I don't know, I've seen this on, on a lot of the high-end smartphone deals, which is where a lot of my focus lies. Um, but Vodacom, for example, used to offer paltry amounts of data with its, with its mm -hmm. smartphone contract, and only for three months, like 75 megs for three months. They now bundle 250 megs for the whole duration of the contract mm. um, for a lot of the things, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. On business call contracts. The thing is, we're talking now the sub 1,000 Rand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for Android to do anything and any of these phones to do anything, you need the bandwidth. So th that's just my question. As you say, yeah, the Android. Not the bandwidth, bandwidth. You, need the, you need the cost, you need the, you need the service behind you it. You need cheap bandwidth. Yes. Um, and you say Android's making inroads. Will it ever, or even the Nokia's make inroads unless they can get cheap bandwidth? Maybe not in South Africa. Nokia tried. Yeah. No, Nokia, no, no, Nokia is trying, actually. Um, and in that way, I think they might be more successful with it. Mm. No, yeah. So we'll see. Maybe, you know, and, and we're, we're seeing that, you know, with, uh, with some of the, the, the deals the guys are trying to make. Um, and I think as the back-end technology maybe gets more sophisticated, because I know these things are tricky, zero rating things like email. Uh, so they go, you know, you, like, like what BIS does, right? You're not allowed to stream YouTube. If you want to do that, you, you have to bolt on a data bundle, unless you're an ATA. Um, free plug, you can send me the check later. Um, but, the, but I mean, it is a fairly good deal. You get 500 megs of YouTube streaming on ATA BIS, right? You don't get that on other BIS. So why not that? Zero rate email, zero rate, maybe not Facebook, but you know, okay. some, some because business applications. right now the offering from RIM gives you as an operator opportunity to host that BIS services on your network and not have to mm -hmm. occur no. mm -hmm. the amount of money. Mm -hmm. It goes to France. It goes to France routes. and Amsterdam. Which is why they can't control when these guys are abusing yeah. the bandwidth. No, they, they've got a pipe. They've got, I believe, a 1.5 gigabit per second pipe at Vodacom. So what is RIM doing right? Answer that question. The BIS. It's the cheap uh, no, It's not. Well, it's not the cheap bandwidth. It's compression. What is RIM doing right? It's, com it's compression the and it's commercial agreements. Phones. So it's compression. That's the thing. It's a combination of those two. Good business okay. relationships. To be fair, they're selling these phones in South Africa. Nowhere else. The rest of the world. The rest well, of the, the world. Other developing worlds. Indian people from India have told me that BlackBerry does really well in, in India as well. And they see that across developing nations where BIS offers this amazing value for money compared to what bandwidth costs them. So, okay. Yeah. Well, so uh, I want to move us to the next topic. So, the uh, just a quick one. Um, I don't want to get stuck into it too much, but. Sweet. Solution is what? Right, VPN clients that do compression for Android. Anyway, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and get really, really good commercial partnerships with the operators and convince them. But I think that they've burnt their fingers with BIS. Well, so they just won't against do it. what they the, the incorrect point I made. Just put a Google caching, caching server down at the operators. But we have Google caching servers in South No, Africa. but you, you still need to, because where your expensive bandwidth is between the phone and the towers, so you actually need to do. Uh, Compression, compression yeah. between the Android phone for all data. That's that's the trick. 
for all dots. And streaming video, streaming media in general, I think, will be excluded from these yeah. deals for a long yeah. time yet. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I'm saying this straight off the bat. So if you want to comment, stick your hand up. Uh, Xbox 360 faces a ban in the United States. Motorola has won a patent case, or like step one, once again, like a Neotel sort of phase one of a patent case. Um, and uh, the judge has recommended that imports be stopped and cease and desist letters be hold issued. On, on. You, don't want to, you don't want to get stuck, but however, who owns the Motorola patent? Uh, the Mo Motorola uh, Mobility Patents. A lot of the patents. Mo no, no, the Motorola Mobility Patents are now owned by Google. Okay. Not these. So specifically mobility. I'm not sure if this uh, is we related. Don't know if this is, uh, we I don't, don't know. I they don't know if this is related to Motorola Mobility. What, what, Can you remember what these... Owned by? Microsoft. No, no, but added to this, um, mm. Google has only officially taken ownership of Motorola. Mobility. In the past two, three days. Yes. I don't understand. So it's mobility. Yes. Very specific. That they part take of ownership the and like, suddenly there's a ban. Yes. No, 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 not suddenly. No, this case has been coming for a long time. This case has been yes. going for a long time. It's been going for two years. I know it's very interesting to look at the correlation there, but it's... Uh, correlation. This, the, the case hey, has been going since 2010. Come on. The initial complaint was filed by Motorola in November 2010. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the okay, Xbox right. violated four Motorola mobility patents. Is it, uh, is it mobility? Say that again slowly. <laughs> there we go. Which patent Do they say which one? Uh, sorry, that was? Motorola Mobility Patents. Mobility? Mm. Mm. 20 when? <laughs> 10. Doesn't matter. How long do you think it's taken Google to, s to actually sign Not it two years. Easy. Nope. What amounts of monies are we talking about here? Uh, 12 and a half billion. Okay, it, it is not <laughs> taken. It's not taken. Two, just check your it has not taken no, two years no, way, for China to anything, agree uh, to the deal. Six months from now. I'm sure the It's taken them a year. Well. In si six months from no. now, we'll see now that Google's officially in charge. Okay. What, what happens? happens? Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting. Anyway, the, the bottom line is is that in the United States... Of America! <laughs> that's a bad market to get banned in. Yes, um, yes it is. They're facing a ban. And the, the decision now rests with the International Trade Commission, apparently. So They're generally not so lenient. The, judge, the judge has recommended... Well, it's a US ITC. Um, so the, the, but the judge has recommended... This is the judge's recommendation mm. to the commission. Going to be interesting. So uh, moving swiftly along from that is NVIDIA Kai platform. Tell us about that, Khaled. Uh Well, okay, we've known for a while that, or we've seen the rumors for a long time that there are plans to get tablets to a price point similar to, say, the Kindle Fire or the Barnes Noble Nook. I love how we're not referring to the Kindle Fire as an actual tablet. <laughs> yes, well, okay. <laughs> In any so case. To get it to that kind of price point, $250, $200, that's, that's really where you want it because you know, at that price point, people are sort of looking at it and going, that's not so bad. I can afford that. And if you can give them a good experience for that, all the better. Uh, so NVIDIA is now actually rolling out a platform um, along with, there's, there's a tablet involved in this as well. The platform they're calling Kai, which is supposed to help manufacturers roll out cheap tablets on NVIDIA tech. And they've put a lot of work into this. So System on chip, what is this? This is Kai. Yeah, what is so when you say they've, they've made it easier, what, what do you mean? I mean Sorry. that they've put the hard work in to make, a, to make the chips cheap so that you can get this cheap. This is a Tegra 3. So that is a quad core. Just well, the reason I just asked okay. is this, a platform for building a quad core. Android tablets. Yes. It's just that the so they're trying to enable quad core tablets running Android ICS and to get them to market at a $200 price point. So it's like the Tegra platform for smartphones. This okay. is the Kai platform. So they're getting tablets. their stuff cheap enough so that you can roll out cheap tablets Very all cool. over yeah. the place. We were joined in IRC by a one Yanni. Um, I'm not going to... Yes. Let's uh, not make assumptions. Yeah, let's not make assumptions. Uh, if you want to identify yourself, you're more than welcome to. But um, it's, it's fairly good authority that I got my orders of magnitude way wrong. The BIS pipe from Vodacom is 2 terabits per second. Oui. And he says that he says that the only South Africa offers uh, unlimited bandwidth on BIS. That said, um, I I mean I stand by what I said previously, which is I've spoken to pe to operators from places like India, and while they might not offer unlimited data, they offer B a BlackBerry and BIS offer such value for money that they continue to sell very and the the device, the combination of the de because the device is also cheap if you look at the eighty five twenty. The combination of the two offers really good value for money 
to, to consumers in those markets uh, that other smartphones just can't, can't keep up with, not right now. So, uh, yeah, sorry, backtracking a little there, um, but yeah, uh, yeah. I wanted to move on to... Let's leap ahead. Indeed, <laughs> into <laughs> the leap motion, which promises to be better than Connect, which is not in exactly very hard. Okay, it's in the show notes. Go check out the video. It actually looks pretty slick. This is running on PC and Mac. Uh, I believe it's already up for pre-order as well, or if not, it will be very soon. And they've shown this doing in the video. Go watch the video. I'm telling you right now. Go very watch quick. it. What are you looking do it now. Is it still a camera idea? Yes. Okay. But it's running smoother, much better than the Connect. The gesture recognition is way better. Um, they've shown it. You. you you know, actually navigating around stuff on a screen, okay. playing first-person shooters, that sort of thing. In an open platform? Uh, yes, relatively, I think. No, you're paying for the hardware and you can do whatever you want. Probably, yeah. yeah. But running on, uh, not Linux yet, to my knowledge? No. Uh, like Microsoft I say, this is at the moment for Windows and Mac. Pricing? I can't remember. Does anyone have it open? Because that's the, the, that's the big option it, as well. Uh, from I what I recall, it wasn't bad. The pricing was actually very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. what you got. Compared to Connect. $69.99, PC and Mac compatible. Okay. USD. Plans, yes, hmm. USD. Plans to ship in December. Not a bad plus at all. Well, now you have one of the big studios picks it up and run with it. Otherwise, Studio. it's going to go down. The, 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 thing about these alternative yeah, the thing about these alternative controllers is that, I mean, if they haven't taken Kinetics it off. made it because they bought into Star Wars and they released the new Xbox. What? Star Wars with Kinetics. You what see, what they're also planning on doing is shipping a whole bunch of these devices to developers okay. to try and kickstart the platform as well. And when I say a whole bunch, I mean fifteen to twenty thousand. <laughs> it's a good idea, and hopefully, I mean that does something for them. But once again, as I as I said, I just don't see uh, well, these alternative controllers. They haven't taken off on the mainstream platforms. What are the chances that they're going to take off on something like PC and Mac? The big problem with a lot of these things also is we're not designed to do things like this. We get tired. Our arms just, I think it's called gorilla arms or something like that. They're just too tight. It's actually, we get too tired. So, so it need to work. So how would you be interacting with this device? Would you be doing this all the time? So we're great for games because you're doing this. But if you're actually working throughout a long day, you don't want to be sitting doing something like this. You're just going to get tired. Mm -hmm. uh, your back's going to go into spasm. All the rest of so that's also one of the problems with, with these controllers is how do you use it? What do you and use it for? Day to day. We'll have to see. So this brings us to the last topic that I want to discuss for, for tonight, which is the, the, an app by a local developer called What I Mean. And the principle behind this is that, you know, sometimes you're explaining something to somebody and they just don't get it and you just want to quickly just draw it. And like, mm. This is what I mean. But now what makes this interesting is that it's not, you don't just draw a picture and send a JPEG. It's a video. A video? Yeah, a video. But not like, um, so, so it actually shows the progression of the drawing uh, and, but it looks like you can only send to other what I mean users. Okay, because I was just going into Sketch, with, uh, which was bought by Evernote. You can do the same thing. But okay, video is interesting in both. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it lets and you... audio? Yeah, it lets you add audio to... So while you're drawing, you can thing. explain. As you're drawing, you speak and you go, and wow. this thing here, and the arrow suddenly appears. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, That's interesting. Yeah, so, so this app is available from uh, Pear, I think, is, is the developer. It's, it, I didn't find it easily with a search. Um, so the link will be in the show notes for, for those who are interested in checking it out. The one thing that concerned me, and it actually blocked my progress, I didn't dare proceed past this point, is when I create a new whatever, what I mean object, um, it, it brings up a little grid of four things, and it goes 99 cents if you want to add either one of these, which is an audio clip or a background image. Is it per one of those? It's, it seems like it. So it's not like you unlock a feature of the... It looks like you pay a one four, US dollar... Four dollars if you want all those features every time in, you send a message. In one message, yes. So every single time you, you create a message, you have to pay the developer. No, that doesn't make sense. You can just draw without paying any cost, but you can't like add a background image or audio without paying the seven rand or no, eight rand 50 <laughs> uh, for, for adding tomorrow a picture Tomorrow morning nine something. rand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tomorrow 10 rand or whatever. Um, so <laughs> Saturday, uh, one liter of petrol. <laughs> So th that was a bit concerning. I, I don't know if I can justify paying seven. I mean, I, that's more expensive than an MMS. I mean, yeah. it's not a, a, a time, you know, a time dilated video thingy explanation that I'm giving somebody. But I mean, when I can use something no, that's I'm native sure to my phone. Off. It's got to be. 
Yeah. But to me, I, I, I didn't want to taste it. I was too scared to taste it, to be completely Watch honest. Watch your comment section. I'm sure that somebody will comment on it. Comment on it, yeah. We all need to get hold of the guy and ask. Yeah, I'm I think it would be really right cool now. to get them in. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you know who the developer is? Uh, on Twitter, yes. Oh, uh, okay, cool, cool. Tweet him and we'll, we'll get back next week. Yep. Yeah, indeed. Cool, and that takes us into something fun to end the show <coughs> yes. with. Yes. Otherwise Rain known as, as the, the kicker. kicker. Uh, we have two this week. Uh, the first one is a laser-equipped MAV. What's an MAV? Uh, it's, I can't remember what's it called. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm asking you. It's, it's a robotic it, thingy. It's, it's basically, it's a flying machine. So, um, and this one... A multi-something vehicle. Aerial vehicle. Something aerial vehicle. In this case, basically, it's a fixed-wing uh, model plane. Um, and basically, what they've done is they've affixed a laser to the front with, with a reader. And they're basically using this to have the thing then map the entire region of its surroundings in real time on the plane um, and working out where it can fly. So you see it basically flying through this room. And as it's going right, you can see basically just in front of it, the real time data as it's coming in. And as it's actually working out where, where the walls in front of it are, and as it turns and avoids them and stuff like that. Um, so I would imagine the, the, the ideas of this is for mapping areas. Also now for aerial drones to fly around and see where things are. Uh, and it worked amazingly well. It seems like a very, just from your explanation, it seems like a very similar technology to the self-driving cars. Very, except I think what this is more about is the fact that you've, you've got a single laser tracking where the things are. So like with uh, the cars I had with the LiDAR, uh, which, which had multiple sensors and all this, mm -hmm. this is a single sensor on this fixed wing plane, basically mapping out what's in front of it, done in real time on the plane. Yeah, all right, that's awesome. That's always, it's like, yeah, 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 that's not so bad. It's, and it's like on the plane. It's on like, the plane. Not bad. No, Micro air vehicle. And this is a small plane. Mm. Micro air vehicle. Ah, cool. Is what MAV stands for. Is what the M stands for. Cool. The next thing is fantastic because I love steak. <laughs> Oklahoma State University is trying to patent a steak. But what, I'm, what, what I mean when I say this, they're trying to patent a specific cut that they have identified as a particularly delicious cut of steak. And uh, the reason they're going for this and not so for something like, say, Coca-Cola's Trade Secrets, um, with Coca-Cola's Trade Secret, their recipe stays with them. They don't ever have to give it to anyone else. With a cut of steak, you kind of have to tell the every butcher that is going to be making a cut of this how they need to cut it. And that's what's part of the patent application and or wh what's going to be part of it. somebody is stealing your patent? I'd yeah. assume that those people would be advertising the specific, I think they're calling it a Vegas steak or a Vegas cut. Or so I'll just call it a New Orleans steak. And cut it the same. Yeah, or Maybe. How, do you, how do you also prove that no one else has done this? It's not prior art. Exactly. I found it kind of hilarious. Yeah, and the US Patent Office is fairly bad at prior art. <laughs> as it's been identified. Anyway. But there it is. They, they, they found a particularly I, I delicious part of steak. I thought this was a joke. I thought they were making a statement. Or as Mickey D pointed out in RSC, a statement. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's nice being the nice friends. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you, Mickey D. <laughs> they must probably just come to the side of the world and come check if we're not cutting our steak in that fashion already. I don't know. It would be lovely if this is all about a ribeye steak. <laughs> you just think about it. And then they would hold the patent for 30 years, and no one can cut steaks that way for 30 Without paying their royalties and <sighs> no. anyway. getting the proper license. How's this? Um, yeah, I know. Oh, massive uh, R&D money was spent on identifying this delicious cut Just of before steak, we so. say goodbye. Wait, wait. I know Carrot, I've this. got a suspicion you've got a reply back. Uh, no, I don't think so. Not yet. Uh, because it popped out on your Oh, your fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> on your Twitter account. Just have a look quickly. Yeah, yeah. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the awesome okay, thing no, about anyway, real-time real -time sure. internet. Okay, thank thing. you. Um, he says it's per user once off. He just published a new version, removed unused permissions, and the background plugin is now free. Cool. The, the, well I, I, I actually complained or I asked him what's with all the, the wonky permissions because he has a couple of permissions in there that, that make me a little bit sketchy. You know, it's something that I'll have to see a review before I actually download the app. And uh, he said he's working on, on actually getting them down. And now yeah. he has. Thank you very much. Well done. That's very cool. Yeah, I did, to, to caveat all of this, I did use like the very first release of this application. Um, and I think it's really cool. It's really encouraging to see some solid, this is a freaking cool idea, man. Draw something for productive use. It's brilliant. I think it's a great idea now that we know it's once off. So $4 effectively sense. buys you this $3 app. $3. Because he's given you one of those things for free now. Oh, brilliant. Cool. So I'll just wait for the next version where he gets me the other the other, uh, other, <laughs> other, other two. And then, but like in, in, so in 10 years' time, we'll go, finally, I can show you the app. <laughs> yeah. 
Cool. Like WhatsApp. Well, that I'd uh, just like to... But they've never charged us. Not yet, but he still doesn't want to use it. Well, actually, I am using it. Oh, you do? <laughs> I just don't like using it. So it's kind of like Facebook, which I eventually did what to? I deleted it. Did you delete your profile? I deleted my account again. Oh, okay, All right, cool. Now you just have to wait three weeks for it to yep. actually become inactive. Yeah, well, I don't go in there, ever. <laughs> All right, with that, uh, uh, Johan Els, where can people find you? Blog.hu-els.co.za Tim Hock, where can people find you? Let's talk, uh, let's talk network TV. You're quite a patriot there. Yes. <laughs> Gareth Vermeulen, where can people find you? About.me slash hockey ZA. I'm Jan Vermeulen. I write for my broadband. You can find me there uh, or at Jan VZA on Twitter or Jan Vermeulen on Google+. And I've not been very active on either of those social networks because it's, it's, been, it's, been it's, it's, it's been a busy two weeks. Um, that said, thank you very much for joining us. We'll check you next week. Indeed.